Good morning. Welcome to the Gadsden City Council meeting. I would like to remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the all for vibrate position. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T UVerse, and the City of Gadsden YouTube channel. This meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Latham. Present. Councilman Smith is absent. Councilman Avery. Here. Councilman Back. Here. Councilman Wilson. Here. Councilwoman Minatra. Here. And Councilman Robinson. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask President Back to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've given us, God. We thank you for our city. We thank you for the opportunity to live our lives here, Father. And we pray for wisdom and uh, discernment as we make decisions that affect our city and our citizens. Father, we just lift up those that uh, are protecting us, our first responders. We ask for safety and protection for them, especially during rainy weather. Father, we just praise your name. And at this moment, God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing unto thy sight. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meetings held on April 2nd. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of March 29th through April 4th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Agenda item seven is reserved for proclamations and commendations. Mayor Ford has some this morning. Thank Welcome. you, Mr. President, members of the council. This is something that uh, former Representative Rod Scott uh, had a lot to do with in the legislature. Uh, passed a lot of bills preventing child abuse and neglect, and this is a proclamation. I'm going to request that he reads this, please. Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> uh, from the city of Gaston, Alabama proclamation whereas preventing child abuse and neglect is a community problem that depends on involvement among people throughout the community and whereas child maltreatment occurs when people find themselves in stressful situations without community resources and don't know how to cope and whereas the majority of child abuse cases stem from situations in conditions that are preventable and an engaged and supportive community. And whereas child abuse and neglect can be reduced by making sure each family has the support they need to raise their children in a healthy environment. And whereas child <coughs> abuse and neglect not only directly harms children, but also increases the likelihood of criminal behavior, substance abuse, health problems such as heart disease and obesity, and risky behavior such as smoking. And whereas all citizens should become involved in supporting families and raising their children in a safe, nurturing environment, and whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnership created among social service agencies, schools, faith, faith communities, civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. Now, therefore, our mayor, Craig Ford, of the city of Gaston, Alabama, do hereby join with the Gaston City Council and on behalf of the Alabama Department of Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention, the Family Success Center of Etowah County and the Shepherd's Cove Hospice do hereby proclaim the month of April 2024 as Child Abuse Prevention Month. And the city of Gaston 
We call upon all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, and businesses to increase their participation in our effort to support families, therefore preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live, presented this day, April 20, 2024. Thank you, Mayor. So all the organizations that we're presenting this to, would you please come forward? Miss Katie, I'll let you introduce everybody, okay? But I hate to say this, uh, you know, unfortunately this is an issue, and we wish it wasn't an issue, but, you know, I was sitting there reading this this morning in my office, and I was sitting here thinking, boy, you know, probably none of us hopefully never had to experience this. But for those that have experienced that, we thank God for organizations like these behind us uh, and for everyone standing behind us that get involved in this and participate in trying to prevent this from happening into our law enforcement. Thank you, Bobby, uh, for the police department. Uh, I hope we get a zero result in the city of Gas, and I know that may be impossible, but we're going to continue to strive for that. And I want to thank Katie and Family Success Center and all the other organizations uh, for allowing us to present them to this. I asked Rod to read this because I remember serving the legislature for him, with him. He and I served together for 16 of my 18 years. Uh, Rod was an advocate uh, for the state of Alabama in preventing child abuse, and I just thought it was fitting for him to be able to read the resolution so, or the proclamation. So we're going to present this to them at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Emma Clapp. I'm the executive director of the Family Success Center, and we're very fortunate that the city of Gadsden, the city council, and of course Craig Ford have been very generous in helping us with this task. We're funded by the Alabama Department of Child Abuse and Neglect, and I actually had to write it down because we have several agencies that are funded in our community, including the James M. Berry Center, Shepherd's Cove, United Way Success by Six, or the Student Success Program, the Gadsden City Schools Hype Program, Gadsden State Community Colleges Empowering Families Through Workforce Development, and then we have four programs that are funded by them. All of our mission is essentially to help families in order to prevent child abuse. Uh, we have four programs of prevention talks, the Family Matters of Dad program, Safe and Successful, and the Peace program. Behind me I have Teresa Owens who is our Peace program director and she sees about 4,000 kids in a year and teaches them about child abuse awareness. And then Katie works our program for prevention talks, which is a community-based program. And because of uh, Craig Ford and, uh, sorry, Mayor Ford and Ruth Moffitt, we were able to host a human trafficking training, which was very well attended. So we were very excited about that. Um, we covered things like Aaron's Law, Good Touch, Bad Touch, um, what, Aaron's Law, if you don't know what it is, look it up, it's very sad. Uh, but we have to do that, it's state mandated, so we cover that for them. We cover bullying, regulating emotions, character development, and how to tell a trusted adult if they're being abused. Oftentimes kids don't know that they're being abused until someone tells them, because it's normal for them. So we, oftentimes when we see our 15,000 kids in a year between these programs, kids will come forward, let them know, and tell a trusted adult that it's happened. At that point, they, they go through DHR and the Barry Center. But I do want to let Emily Sims quickly say something about what she does at Shepherd's Cove. Good morning. I'm the Foundation Director at Shepherd's Cove Hospice. I appreciate you guys giving me a moment to speak this morning. Um, Shepherd's Cove Hospice is located in Albertville, Alabama. We do serve nine counties, including Etowah County. Um, and it may sound like a new name to you guys. We've been around for over 40 years. Um, and we have multiple programs, starting with palliative care, hospice care, which is in home and in our IPU. And then we have a bereavement center. And that is where we're able to do um, a child abuse and neglect prevention services and so our bereavement team goes out into the schools and um, they do in school sessions with children who have had a traumatic loss um, and that can be a parent a grandparent someone that they deem that's traumatic for them and children are oftentimes known as the forgotten mourner because if you think about it if a parent is grieving the loss of a loved one sometimes the child is the one who is forgotten about and um, we think that children are resilient and they're going to bounce back and most of the time they do but a lot of times they don't know how to express those emotions and they don't know how to explain how they're feeling and so these um, bereavement sessions are um, we have our licensed social workers come in and they just do something 
something with them, they talk to them, they teach them how to express those emotions. What is a positive way to express grief and what is not a positive way to express grief? Because if we teach that at a young age, then as we grow older, we will know how to cope easier with grief. It's something we're always going to have to deal with forever and ever and ever. Um, but we have a wonderful team. We serve parts of Etowah County. We're not fully engrossed in Etowah County yet. It is a goal um, to eventually you know, encompass all of Etowah County. Um, but right now we're kind of in the outer lying areas in the county. We serve um, Marshall County, DeKalb County, Jackson County, um, and Blount County. So we are really out there. We see um, hundreds and hundreds of kids, probably five to 600 kids a year um, through those group sessions. And we also have um, where they can come to our facility um, and do one-on-one -on -one if that makes them feel more comfortable. And we also have adult sessions. The beauty of this is everything is free. They don't have to pay anything. Um, so if the child is getting served, um, the parent can be served as well. Um, and then we have two Camp Hopes, which is a, a grief um, camp that we do uh, twice a year. One is for families and one is for the in-school kids. And it's just a way for them to come and learn how to have fun through grief. Um, I know that doesn't sound like that's an easy thing, but we teach them positive ways. They get to talk to counselors. And so we're just fortunate to be able to be able to do this in our community. Um, and hopefully one day we're going to be able to do all of Etowah County, um, you know, as funding and, you know, we have to hire people and things of that nature. So we're just hoping that one day we're able to service you all and you'll get to know who we are at Shepherd's Cove Hospice. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning. On the front end, as I uh, prepare to read this, I'm going to ask the um, Gaston Public Library and all that came along with you, if you all are just come and stand with me so we don't have to stand alone this morning. And so this proclamation says, whereas the, sit, whereas the Gaston Public Library offers the opportunity for everyone to connect with others, learn new skills, and pursue their passions, no matter where they are in life's journey, and whereas since 1906, the Gaston Public Library has long served Gaston and Etowah County as a trusted in institution, striving to ensure equitable access to information and services for all members of our community, and whereas Gaston public libraries everywhere adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, developing and expanding collections, programs, and services that are diverse as the populations they serve. And whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that provide a sense of local connection, advancing understanding, civic engagement, shared community goals, and whereas libraries play a pivotal role in the economic development by, by providing resources and support for job seekers, entrepreneurs, and small businesses, thus contributing to local prosperity and growth. And whereas libraries make choices that are good for the environment and make sense economically, creating thriving communities for a better tomorrow. And whereas libraries are treasured institutions that preserve our collective heritage and knowingly safeguarding both physical and digital resources for present and future generations. And whereas libraries are essential public good and fundamental institutions in democratic societies, working to improve society, project the right to education and literacy, and promote the free exchange of information and ideas for all. And whereas libraries, librarian and library week uh, workers are joining library supporters, advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. That was a mouthful. <laughs> now, therefore, <laughs> Craig Ford, mayor of Gaston, Alabama, do hereby join with the Gaston City Council proclaiming the week of April 7th through 13th, 2024 as National Library Week. In the city of Gaston, during this week, Mayor Craig Ford encourages all residents to visit the Gaston Public Library in downtown Gaston and its two branches in the East Gaston and Alabama City to celebrate the adventures and opportunity that unlock for us every day. And this is presented on the ninth day of April, 2024, National Library Week. And before I present this to them, I just want to say, and I know everyone in here has visited our library, but we have an amazing uh, library and I really want to highlight uh, library director uh, Craig Scott is actually the chair for the National Library Association am I right Craig 
Did uh, I say that, it right? Come on up here. That's a little much. How about the <laughs> Alabama library? Okay. <laughs> I went national. That's coming. National. Okay, so <laughs> Alabama Association. So we're really proud of all the work that all of our librarians and those that in their respective places <laughs> serve. So we present this proclamation on today. Mr. President, Mayor, and uh, Council Members. My name is Craig Scott. I'm Director of the Gazin Public Library. Today, I brought along some of my outstanding team members who make our library go each and every day. In addition, we have two guests with us today, Jessica Everingham and Barbara Curry from the Alabama Public Library Service. That's APLS, our state library. Jessica, Barbara. Um, and they're here, they're going to be checking up on us to make sure we're doing the right stuff and uh, giving us some pointers and a uh, tour of the library and all that. Um, please know we greatly appreciate this very special recognition um, and uh, not only for us but for libraries across the country. Um, it has been a rough year for libraries. Um, this is good news today and a real shot in the arm for us. We also appreciate your continued support for not only our main library, but our two branches in East Gadsden and Alabama City. On Friday and Saturday this week, the Alabama Library Association will be holding its annual convention in Homewood. On Friday night is our President's Award Program, and I'm really proud to announce that LaShonda Williams, our branch manager in East Gadsden, has been uh, chosen as this year's Paraprofessional of the Year for the state of Alabama. LaShonda. Oh, wow. Congratulations. She does amazing work each and every day over in the branch, has been recognized by her peers across the country. She's also helped create our story walk across the, from the main library in Underwood Park. And uh, I'm really, really proud of this. Uh, three years ago, she started uh, with the American Care Act that uh, she became a certified application counselor. And uh, she's helped over 400 families and individuals um, obtain their medical insurance. So it's, it's amazing. On Saturday afternoon, I'll be sworn in as president of the Alabama Library Association. So I'm really looking forward to representing Gadsden in that capacity and then uh, helping libraries across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> Outstanding. Mayor Ford, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ford, for those presentations, and Ruth Moffitt, thank you. I'd like to recognize uh, we do have two special guests today. I'd like to start with uh, uh, the Reverend Z. Andre Huff is with us this morning. He is a uh, board member of the Gaza City Board of Education. Welcome, Reverend Huff. Glad you're here today. And also from the Gaza City Board of Education, we have Miss Janie Browning. And Ms. Browning is going to share with us some information that's really exciting about a program that's coming to the city of Gazin and to our students. Good morning, Jane. Thank you guys for allowing me to speak today. I will not take more than a couple minutes. Right. We have some exciting news. The Gaston City School District has partnered with Flying Classroom. They promote aviation and STEM for young students. Our middle school um, after school programs are building solar go-karts. They are transforming those go-karts and they're building those the last week in April. And we would like to celebrate this with a community STEM Fest. So today, I would just like to announce our community STEM Fest. Gaston City Schools will have an event on April the 27th from 11 to 2.30. I have flyers here for you guys if you would like to take one of those and I can also email them. We want to get the word out. It is so important that we give our students opportunity and that we provide them with experiences that they may not get during the traditional school day hours. And so come join us. We're gonna have a special guest and his name is Captain Barrington Irvin. Google him if you don't know about him. But he was the first and youngest and only 
African-American male to fly solo across the globe. And he has invested his life's work into providing opportunities for students, especially students in urban areas. So please come and join us and support us. We have a lot of community agencies who will also have resource tables for our parents so that they can find out all of the resources that are available to them throughout the city of Gaston. If you are a community agency and I haven't sent you a million emails about coming, then please um, just get in touch with me, Janie Brown and Gaston City Schools, and I will be glad to give you information. But please come out and visit and see us. It's going to be a good time. Food, family, lots of STEM interactive projects for students to work on. There'll be several stations. We'll have a DJ, Sam the Balloon Man. Captain Barrington will be there and it will be a great day. So we would love to have you guys come and take a look. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to speak today. And thank you guys for the work that you put into Gaston City Schools because it is making a difference. And every day that we're able to provide opportunity for students, we're growing our community. And that's what it's all about. So thank you. I appreciate your support, Mayor. And I appreciate all of your support. And Thank you for all that you do for Gaston City Schools. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. And I so, do want to say thank you for coming to our family night, um, Councilman Avery. He came to our first soul food event that we had at Walnut Park in February to celebrate um, Black History Month. It was a great event, and we had great food. And um, he came, and I just want to say thank you for taking time to do that as well. Yeah, if you'll hand those to Ms. Nelson right here, we can get those. And uh, thank you for what you're doing. Y'all, there are some exciting things happening in our city school system. I know the mayor is working real close with uh, uh, the city superintendent, Keith uh, Blackwell. So, Mayor, you got anything you want to? I just want to say I'm excited. I want to ride in a solar golf cart. So. We're going to challenge <laughs> you. Go We're going to get a lot of photos. Yeah. So, yeah. the kids will be test driving those. and. Um, we will allow the mayor. Well, we look forward to, to supporting you well. personally and financially. Thank That's you. Right. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. Item eight in our agenda is unfinished business. We have none today. Item nine is a resolution authorizing an agreement with Rent Dot Fund. This is for installation of a self-service kayak on city property for rent by the public, and the amount is $18,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Y'all, this, this is a pretty big deal. We, uh, uh, Mayor Ford and his team have come up with, uh, you can now, uh, we're not, I guess, right this moment, but real soon we'll be able to rent kayaks on the Coosa River. So we're excited about this. We're trying to come up with ideas for the summer. Uh, we're going to let Councilman Wilson have a duck boat race. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're, uh, we're trying to come up with just thinking outside the box, kayak rentals, and, uh, you know, we're having paddle boats, and we're going to have the bait shack uh, manage them. We already have employees there, so it's not costing us anything for an employee cost, and just trying to offer the people something to do and, and really utilize our best natural resource of the city, the river. That's outstanding. Look forward to that. Yeah. Any other comments? All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item 10 comes under the first reading. This is an ordinance establishing the Gadsden Arts Council. This will establish a seven-member board to advance and enrich the arts and will serve as a coordinating, promotional, and supporting body between artistic endeavors and institutions in the city. This ordinance has been presented today for the first reading, and the council will vote on it next week. So, Mr. President, can I address yes. that? Because I won't be sure, here next week. I got annual training from the National Guard. But uh, this is a big deal. This is something that I noticed when we were all running for office that we did not have an arts council. Uh, Dr. Charlie Hill mentioned this to me. And we need more participation from the public uh, helping the arts programs in the city of Gaston. And that could be the Cultural Arts Center, the Ritz, the Pittman, the Museum of Arts, and other areas, uh, Carver, and I mean, I can name all of them. But we, we need an arts council that will help host fundraisers. Uh, I have these harebrained ideas, and I just think outside the box. But I want to hold a fundraiser on Wall Street in Alabama City, 
uh, shut down the street, white tablecloth, raise money, uh, and the money goes towards the arts, uh, the facilities. There's so many times that these facilities come to us and they need money for O&M, uh, they need money for uh, you know events that they're bringing in, and they're only budgeted a certain amount in the budget, and rightfully so, but then all of a sudden they have something come in midstream and they don't have an avenue to go to to help them out, uh, 501 or, or whatever it may be. But uh, I'm excited about this, and I, we are looking for seven volunteers that do not mind raising money, uh, we will be asking for people to donate money and support our arts program in the community, and I'm excited for this for City of Gas. And uh, we had someone come in to look at our uh, industry and looking to br bring an industry here to Gaston, and they said they love the arts that we already have in place. So that was a positive. Uh, we took them by the Museum of Arts. They loved that. They thought that was wonder in the imagination place. So I'm excited about this. Uh, I was never an art person growing up. I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, but I was in the sports scene. But I, you know, now as I've gotten older and I can't play sports, I love arts. So <laughs> there you go. Here, here. All right. Thank you, Mayor Ford. Anybody else? All right. Item 11 is uh, new business. I believe we have a few items this week. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. yes, President Beck. I have ordinance 2024-275 authorizing conveyance of property at 802 East Chestnut Street and property located at South 9th Street to the Gas and Il Islamic Society who they've offered to purchase the property in the sum of $23,500. I would like for this to be considered for new business. Second. <coughs> Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the ordinance today as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We have unanimous consent for consideration. Move to adopt. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. All right, thank you. Is there any others? I believe there's. President, I have one legal document 2024 uh, 7, uh, 279 uh, requested by the engineer department. So, war be it number 3497, um, budgeted for $145,800 um, as relates to Carver Gym roof replacement um, submitted. Uh, war is uh, bid is awarded to, I think, Johns and Kurtzke. And, um, and so there was a lowest and re reasonable and responsible bid. Um, the gym is in is in desperate need of a roof. Uh, there's current leakage, so this will be a great addition. And plus, I'm asking for adoption. For, uh, consider on the new business day. Second. Second. All right, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, we have consent. Um, again, this is budgeted um, in the count of CD, uh, CDBG funds um, as for um, uh, adoption. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Mr. President, can I address that? Yes, very forward. So I wanted it to pass first, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to say uh, thank you to the council for this. This is something we've been trying to uh, get uh, replaced a year ago. Uh, the funds were the question. Uh, we attempted the insurance route. It didn't. The gym is leaking uh, as we speak. So to the public, that's why we asked for to uh, bring before new business. Uh, this, this is a good project, and we got a good bid. <laughs> Uh, as pre-council, we stated earlier, the other bid was double that amount, so we've, we re we vetted the, the contractor, they're legit, and we're excited about getting this program going for the Carver community, so this is a big deal for that area. Appreciate that, Mayor Ford, thank you. All right, Councilman Wilson. Uh, yes, sir, I actually have several, Mr. President. Um, I began with 
2024 277, which is a resolution awarding the bid number 3552 for the landfill cover dirt project. Um, the total amount of the contract is $92,250, and it is being awarded to uh, Bedwell and Horton Excavating. They were, again, the lowest responsible bidder. We had two different bids. Um, Bedwell and Horton was $92,250. Uh, Taylor Corporation, which was the other bid, was $207,300. So this was more than 50% um, less um, by this responsible bidder. And we've done work with Bedwell and Horton uh, in the past, so I know we can trust their work. Um, and for those of y'all that don't know, when we, every day at the end of the day, any stuff that's dumped in our landfill, we're required to cover it with dirt every day so that there's no exposed garbage in the landfills. And so this will actually help us with providing the cover dirt that we need to cover the landfill every every day. Um, so again, the total amount of the contract's $92,250. So um, given the nature of this, I'd like to ask that we suspend the rules and consider this under new business today, please. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Uh, Mr. President, next one is 2024-270. I'm sorry, move to adopt. I okay. love to skip that every time. <laughs> Clerk, those, we take the vote. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Okay, next one, resolution 2024-271 from the engineering department. Uh, this is a resolution authorizing the application and acceptance of ARC Power Initial Initiative Planning Grant for our downtown Gadsden streetscape revitalization plan. Uh, essentially, ARC, the Alabama Regional Commission, um, has a grant program that um, cities are eligible to apply for that awards up to $65,000 for the um, the planning and research necessary for a streetscape revitalization. As some of you may recall, we just completed our citywide master plan with Goodwin Mills K Wood. Uh, part of that had several specific initiatives focused on our downtown uh, Gadsden streetscape and walkway, making it more pedestrian friendly, um, et cetera. So this is a $65,000 grant up to 65,000 with a $15,000 match from the city to help get that revitalization and redesign off the ground. So um, anytime we're talking about free money, I have no problem suspend suspending the rules. So. Um, if my colleagues have no objections, I would like to suspend the rules and consider this under new business. Second. Clerk, will we take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Um, okay, Mr. President, the next one I have is um, from the engineering department. This is 2024-276, which is a resolution awarding bid number 3553, which is the 2024 City of Gadsden Cemetery Lawn Maintenance bid. The total amount bid is $210,000. Um, from L. Powell Services, LLC. They were the only responsible bidder on the project. Um, the project was published, and, and this was the only responsible bid that we received. Again, the total amounts $210,000, and this will cover weekly maintenance and upkeep for the Forest Cemetery and for the Alabama City Cemetery um, per the specifications provided by the city engineer. So um, if there's no objections, I would like to move to consider this under new business. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Uh, move to adopt. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries to adopt. Um, the last one I have, Mr. President, comes to us from the police department. Um, this is exciting, although I wish it wasn't necessary. Um, this is um, 
request to apply for and accept Department of Homeland Security grant for the purchase of a bomb suit and helmet uh, for the police department. The total amount of this bomb suit is um, $47,267, and this grant from Homeland Security would cover the full cost <clears throat> of that purchase. Um, so again, assuming that we have got the necessary applications completed, um, we should be able to secure this grant, which will be great for the police department. Again, a brand new bomb suit, $47,267. Um, so with that in mind, again, anytime we have an opportunity to get free grant money, I like to move as fast as we can. So I would ask that we suspend the rules and consider this under new business. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Wilson. Councilwoman Monaco. Mr. President, I have um, ordinance number 274 requested by the legal department. This would um, convey property at 3814 Madison Avenue, and it would be um, in favor of Herbert Childs. Um, this property is located adjacent to Mr. Child's property, and it is co-owned by FEMA. And I would like to suspend the rules and take this as new business today. All right. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the ordinance as an item of new business today, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We have unanimous consent for consideration. Move to adopt. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman. All right, Mr. Robinson. President, I have one last one uh, from the legal department, 2024-278, requested by Knuckle of Falls. It's a resolution approving a special event alcohol beverage license for Art on the Rocks for May 4th through 5th, 2024. I'd like to suspend the rules and ask for immediate consideration, please. Second. Uh, move to adopt. Well, we got a clerk. Will you take the vote on, the, on the motion? I'm sorry. I jumped That's, it. You yeah. skip it. I jumped it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. <laughs> yeah. Move to adopt. Yeah. <laughs> Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. All right. Thank you all very much. Item 12 is uh, department reports, committees, and boards. Mayor, we have any today? Don't think so. All right. Well, I do. The EMA was in a class, and we are predicting some possibly f possible flooding tomorrow, but we're, we're observing it. Okay. Yeah, we need to be weather aware, right? Yes, thank you. Right. Okay, then we'll move to item 13, which is citizen request. We have four today. The first one comes from Jason Goins. Uh, Mr. Goins is going to speak about support for planned hangar development at the Northeast Alabama Regional Airport. Mr. Goins, yes, sir, if you'll come to the podium. Okay, well, thanks for having me once again. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, just kind of want to uh, go through a couple things where everybody fully understands what the goal is and the goal is to get the word out about our hangars pro project. Uh, Anthony's been fantastic to work with. Uh, uh, kudos to him for kind of giving us the opportunity up front. Um, the process that we're, we're doing um, to build the, the hangars with private uh, equity and not public money invented itself. We didn't invent that. Um, the long and a quick story is uh, my wife and I uh, lived all over the country building hotels and we decided to build an airplane. And so there's a place in Noonan, Georgia that does an assisted build uh, airplane project. So you buy the kit, you ship it there, you show up once a month and you build. So we are building this plane, trying to figure out where we're going to live and uh, the, uh, we asked the airport could we get 
you know, on, on the hanger list, and they laughed at us and said, yeah, there's 50 people in line before you. It's about two and a half years. And I uh, said, well, can I build my own hanger? Because I'm a GC licensed in seven states. And they said, no, we don't let people build one-off hangers. We want to build an organized project, you know, that's planned and not clustered um, or, or, or pulled apart. And um, I said, well, we can possibly do that. So they gave us the list. And uh, next thing you know, uh, fast forward, uh, we've built 40. And it's been a big success. We've added 48 tail numbers to the airport uh, in Noonan, which is great for the airport. Uh, their fuel sales have gone up, I think, 32 percent uh, since we got this project off the ground, uh, which is great for the airport. Um, the tax assessor is happy because he's able to tax the vertical structure. So format-wise, what we do is we lease the land from the airport at a predetermined rate. Um, there is a CPI increase uh, clause every three years that the rent can go up so the airport can adjust for expenses. Um, we build, you know, the hangar with, with private equity, and then uh, the, the uh, taxing authority gets to tax that vertical structure, so they're pretty happy about that, too. Um, we have changed the entire rent rate at the airport. The standard rate when we got there for a T-hangar was $135 a month. It is now 700 The average T-hangar since we started building, my first row, was price pointed between $90,000 and $135,000 a piece. Uh, and now the most current row ranges from one forty dollars to two hundred five. dollars That's not because of greed. That's because of the land got really expensive and difficult to build on. Um, right now, we're, we're slated to build three small corporate hangars. These are roughly 60 by 80 in size. We're going after higher-end aircraft, which are aircraft and Anthony knows these terms, but uh, a Beechcraft, um, uh, excuse me, a King Air 350. Uh, Phenom is a jet we're trying to get to the Noonan Airport. Uh, and also some other higher end <coughs> twin engine aircraft, which again, use more fuel. So uh, we're trying to graduate that airport into higher end clientele as well. So it seems to be working so far. Uh, we did get permitted about two weeks ago to build those three individual corporate hangars. So we're calling on the corporate market now. Um, anyway, uh, the, way, the way we found Gaston was uh, uh, my wife and I, the final thing you do with your plane when you build is you have it painted. And there's a paint shop happens to be here in Gaston that's renowned throughout the community, uh, really countrywide, for the quality they put out. And so we selected Jonathan and his firm. And uh, we were at the airport one day, and I started looking around. And in Noonan, I'm like, OK, there's no land left. And it's, pretty hilly. I'm looking at gas and going, wow, it's wide open, it's flat. Uh, Y'all have amazing, you know, opportunity uh, right there at the airport. So I hope we, hope we can take advantage of it and, uh, and uh, bring more people, business, aircraft, taxes, fuel sales to your airport and gas and ultimately. So uh -huh. that's the whole thing. Well, thank you very much. It sounds very exciting. We're, we're, we're glad you found Gadsden. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our list is Gil Isbell. Uh, Mr. Isbell's going to, he's here to thank the mayor and city council members for contribution to the Kiwanis Pancake Day. If you've ever been to a walk through time, Gil Isbell portrays Nelson Thomas, the, the founder of Pancake Day. You need to come see me next walk through time. And actually, John Moore told me I've got about 20 minutes to speak. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I'm here today representing the Qantas Club of Gads, and we wanted to express our sincere thanks for the contribution that the city council uh, did make and also the support from the mayor's office. But I want to talk to you a little bit about Qantas just for a moment. Um, now, I've been a Qantas member of probably 25 years. My father was a Qantas Club member for 55 years, perfect attendance. I could, I'm just lucky to be here 55 years. So, <laughs> But the Qantas motto is serving the children of the world. And what we do, we follow the principle of fellowship, cooperation, and service to the youth in our community. Now, Gadsden Qantas Club was originally chartered in 1919. 
And our first pancake day was 1958, and it was started by Nelson Thomas, just as the council president said. And he's the father of pancake day nationwide for Aquinas Club. Now, it was originally held at 514 Broad Street for one year, and just to pull out some information, all the men brought the, the griddles that their wives had, and they kept plugging them in, and all the fuses were blowing because they were plugging in too many of them, so it had to be moved. It was moved to Convention Hall the next year, and then in the recent past, it did move to the venue, and we've had it every year except for one year uh, there was a... Yeah, because of COVID, we couldn't have it. Now, what I'd like to do is express again our sincere thanks to Gadsden City Council, Mayor Craig Ford and his administration, and really the citizens of Gadsden and Etowah County, because without them, this would not be possible. Through the years, since 1958, we've donated back to the community, to children's and youth organizations and charities of over between two and three million dollars. And over time, it just continues to accumulate. But I'd like to tell you which ones we do support presently at this time. We sp support the Ed Y Youth Orchestra, the James M. Berry Center for Children, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Northeast Alabama, Boys and Girls Club of Gas and Etowah County, uh, Girl Scouts of North Central Alabama, Boy Scouts of American Greater Alabama Council and Etowah District, the Gadsden Museum of Art, Community Thanksgiving, the Salvation Army of Gadsden, the United Way of Etowah County. We also give local high school senior scholarships to 10 to 15 graduating seniors between $750 and $1,250. We also give back to the Qantas International Children's Fund, the Christmas view shopping for local underprivileged children. This year we had 40 children and each child is able to purchase up to $100 worth of toys, clothing, whatever they need for Christmas and it provides you know, something for them that they may not have otherwise. We also support Aesop's Fable which is done by Paul Harbison. And Wayne Eads um, plays Santa and he has a charity where he contributes locally, but he goes to Birmingham to see cancer patients, children cancer patients, and is able to provide them with, with gifts, and that is something that the stories he tells, it is very heart-wrenching of what he does. Now, we also support the Women's Club of Gadsden and the Christmas Food Drive of, of Gadsden. Now, these are just some of the few that we are presently supporting, but there are many others in the past we've supported. and but. I and the Qantas Club want to express, again, our sincere thanks for your contribution and the help from the mayor's office. And I would also like to thank the folks at the venue. They are extremely supportive, they help us a lot, and they work hard, and I know that they do a wonderful job for the city. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gil, for coming. And thank you to all the Kiwanians. Uh, what, a, what a good group of folks that do a lot of good things for Gadsden and Etowah County. Appreciate y'all very much. Next on our speaker's uh, citizen request list is Fred Zachary. Mr. Zachary is going to talk about playgrounds at Carver and summer camp fees. Good afternoon. Afternoon. I want to thank you for allowing me to appear before this august body. Uh, let me pull these off. I've had eye surgery, so uh, I've been running around with dark glasses on for several days. But I'm here to talk about a couple of things. One is the, um, the condition of the playground at Carver. And I hate to keep coming to talk about what we don't have. I would like to come one time to talk about what we do have and to thank the Honorable Mayor for providing it through citizens funding or grants or whatever. But I haven't been able to do that because I live in a community that is, uh, is operating on a benign neglect from a different perspective than what is in the plan. That playground is unsafe. I sat here a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and heard you uh, with a suspend the rules to fix a, a safety issue at Moran Park. 
That's beautiful. I was happy to hear that. But if you go to the Carver Playground, you would suspend the playground because it is not safe. And I sent you that packet of pictures uh, to let you see. And if you really want to see what it's like, go over there. Go behind the lunchroom and <coughs> see the playground. Now, I'm not here speaking only for black children. That area has become gentrified. So uh, all kinds of children have, should have access to a safe playground in that community. And if it was only black children, that would still be just as passionate. There has to be more emphasis put in places where we live, and it hasn't been done. I've, I've reviewed the plan. It's a beautiful plan. It's, you know, it's all done up very professionally, but it does not include those communities. And I'm not going to talk about that today because I'm not here to talk about that. What I wish you would do as leaders of the city is to go over there and look at that playground. You know, last time I was here, I was begging for toilets so we wouldn't have to pee in the bushes. That's supposedly been fixed, uh, thanks to Mr. Moore and whomever. So that's one thing I can thank you for, but the toilets haven't arrived yet. Once I can tinkle in one, I will be <laughs> sure that they are coming. The, uh, <clears throat> the other thing, just I want you to go look at this, and there's a picture in here that I consider very, very defining. Uh, and that's the one where that huge pipe comes out of the ground onto the playground. And some little active child could find itself stuffed up in that pipe and dead or uh, injured. You gotta be concerned about all of the children in the community. Because I do believe that you're trying to build a sustainable community from a population of 27%, 17 and under. You can do all of the riverfront development you want to do. You can buy as many buildings as you want to buy. If you don't have a sustainable population, you are not building Gaston. And, and that sustainable population comes out of that 27%. You got to mitigate the drip on population. You're not going to have 150,000 people moving to Gaston. I'm going to do on the water, waterfront. But we do have 27% locked in that we could take care of making sure that they stay guests and citizens, productive guests and citizens. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, the um, camps. I was here today. It was announced that, oh, we're increasing the fees by 60%. And I heard the crowd, nothing is free in guests. And it's not. Never has been. Nothing is free. Unless I miss something. There's 144 different taxes and fees that citizens and guestmen pay to use whatever, to buy whatever. So nothing is free. So if you, you're placing something uh, as camps, that, that's, that's another building block to the sustainable population that's going to sustain this stuff, some of the stuff, about 10% of what you think you're developing. Uh, that you got to have that population, 17 and under, 27 percent. You don't hear anything about them. Nobody talked about them during the campaign. Nobody's talked about them since you guys, the, the new administration and new council has taken place. You got to recognize these kids and recognize their needs. Putting a, 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 a roof on the gym, that's wonderful. But colored people need more than gyms. We need safe playgrounds. We need other things that accommodate the interests and establish an enhancement to their learning ability, safe and in our community. We don't need kids being driven to go to Moran Park so that they can be in a decent park. Fix the park up, people. And I'd be happy to come and say uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hear that 150,000 times, and I know that's a, a good thing. He, I thought he is the mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for fixing up Carver. Not for trying to put some monument to nothing out there at a, at a fee or whatever. Uh, it, it's time. It's time to stop playing with that community. And if you're going to develop, you, if, can you suspend the rules and let me have more time? You, you're, you're welcome to finish your thought. Okay. If, if you can develop District 1, 
Not District 1, District 4 and District 7. I'll do respect to Chris. If you can District you, four. but if you can develop those districts and make them a part of uh, the, the plan to reinvent Gadsden, you're going to have to develop District 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zachary. All right, our last speak, uh, citizen request today, speaker, is Sarah Jenkins from the Fairfield Inn. Hello, guys. I am the sales coordinator at the Fairfield Inn and Suites in Gadsden off of exit 181 over there behind Cracker Barrel. Um, my main goal is to just build relations with the administration here and um, bring in tourism for the city of Gaston and um, really just, you know, make Gaston grow. And that's my main goal. So I would love to get to know everyone and build those relations so we can all go for the same goal. That's great. And then also, I have our regional director actually with uh, our company here, our regional sales director. She just wanted to say a few words. Certainly. My name is Ashley Evans, and um, as Sarah was saying, I'm the Regional Director of Sales for Peachtree Group, and we have um, owned and managed the Fairfield Inn and Suites here in Gadsden since um, April of 2009, so it's been 15 years now we've been a part of the community. Wow. And um, we are just grateful that, uh, you know, that y'all let us be a part of that, and um, uh, we just recently promoted Sarah, so she is handling all the sales there, so if y'all need anything for your businesses or for yourselves, family, whatever, reach out to Sarah and she'd be happy to help you with accommodations at our um, uh, hotel, as well as we would love to, like she said, partner if there's any, um, I'm not certain if y'all have like a tourism committee or anything like that, but um, we would love to, you know, uh, be a part of some of those meetings and help see how we can bring more people to the area and help grad, uh, guests and grow, so. Um, but we appreciate y'all letting us come and speak to y'all. Well, certainly, and thank, thank you all for being here thank today. You so thank much. you for 15 years of uh, being a business in the city of Gadsden. Absolutely. We, um, you know, we hope to, to grow that more here in the next few years, possibly. So, all right. Uh, so more to come on that. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, there is a tourism board that you might could contact, Sarah, that would, I'm sure you, you might know of them. Uh, okay. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. Item 14 is remarks by the mayor and council. Mayor, I guess we'll start with you. I thought you were going to start District 3. You want to start he's with this? Gone, yeah, so he, you're going. he had to step out for a minute. <laughs> I think he's, he left both of his phones and his headphones. Well, we so better hurry. He Here said we go. he's coming back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to remind the people of the sign up for the cleanup day online. It's April 26, 2024, coming up and that we're allowing the public to please join us and help us uh, to participate in the cleanup day. Last year we got almost six tons of trash. This year we're shooting for seven and a half tons. That's our goal. Uh, we should be getting our paving study back soon. I get that call a lot. What about my road? What about the paving projects? So what we did, we went around. We hired this company in last year's budget with a GPS, and they went around and videoed every street, and they are ranking the, the roads from one to how many ever roads we're responsible for, and we're trying to take the politics out of paving and pave the worst roads that need the paving. Uh, uh, to address one of the speakers earlier, I do appreciate him coming down uh, and discussing. He has a keen interest in children, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, he always has, and uh, we appreciate his passion. But I do want to say that the school board is, is having a uh, camp, a summer camp, free tutoring program at Carver this summer. Uh, we have replaced the bathrooms at Carver, outdoor bathrooms. They are not there yet because we had to do an American Disabilities Act with some ramps on the bathrooms we're putting there. Uh, we are developing an aqua center in districts three and six. Uh, we have a trail and park through district three, five, and six. We have a new fire station in district two. We have a housing and neighborhood business district in the plan for district two. Improvement for Adams Park in district one. Uh, riverfront access connecting districts two and one, East Gaston to districts four and five, downtown and riverfront, just some examples. So I just want the people to know uh, that I promise you that we put the whole city 
front and forward, and we're trying to develop the whole area within the city of Gadsden. Uh, what's good for here is good for there, and what's good for there is good for here. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mary Ford. Councilwoman Latham. I have no, no remarks today. <coughs> Councilman Avery. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I'll start um, here. Uh, 2023 Code of Alabama, Title 22 Health, Mental Health, and Environmental <coughs> Control, Title I Health and Environmental Control, generally Chapter 40A Alabama Scrap Tire Environmental Quality Act, Section 22 40A 19 Penalties. Uh, start with one, uh, A. A person who intentionally, knowingly, recklessly, or with criminal negligence, one, accumulates scrap tires in violation of this chapter upon conviction shall be subject to a term of imprisonment not exceeding three months. Two, process scrap tires in violation of this chapter upon conviction shall be subject to a term of imprisonment not exceeding six months. Three, transport scrap tires in violation of this chapter, uh, chapter upon conviction shall be subject to a term of imprisonment not exceeding one year. Four, engages in unauthorized disposal of scrap tires in violation of this chapter upon conviction shall be subject to a term of imprisonment no more, no more than 10 years, no less than one year and one day, and in addition may be fined not more than $10,000 for each violation. <clears throat> um, that was one other, but I'll pass on that. Um, and then uh, my buddy from Alabama Department of Environment and Management uh, said, uh, uh, make this announcement for these particular people because I'm, I'm, I'm working on something here. Scrap t there is a scrap tire program. So for those that have an interest, uh, particularly speaking for District 3, uh, that have an interest in District 3, uh, our district is not a scrap tire environment or community, but there is a scrap tire program. And that program you can find on Alabama Department of EnvironmentalManagement.com. And that program will give you so many uh, opportunities to help uh, as it relates to creating uh, artificial turf, uh, engineered use, uh, expect um, a process of a play playground mulch, rubber mulch, uh, rubber asphalt, uh, Scrap tire marketing, uh, it's a scrap tire marketing program, septic draining fields, and so on and so on and so on. So let's take those scrap tires and let's make an intentional usage of those scrap tires in a, in a positive way compared to bringing them to a beautiful site in District 3 uh, that could be could use some improvements and dumping them uh, in an area that if, if any more goes down there, there's a possibility that they'll go into and probably knock out someone window or into someone house um and 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 so that's really a passion of mine uh, to announce and 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 i'm i'm kind of doing a few things um on the back end to to to, to report uh to the police department um uh tina king and the mayor's office as relates to uh some things that i've, I've come up with that could possibly help <clears throat> With that said, um, um, District 3 Annual Cleanup Day is on Saturday, this Saturday, April the 13th, with partners with PAL and Keep Etiwall Beautiful. Um, this is no, uh, I, I'm going to support and announce also, as the mayor has already, as it relates to gas and cleanup day, this is no competition. This is just an added uh, cleanup day uh, because the, the unfortunate is in certain areas is that once we clean up a certain area, I'll be doggone within two to three hours, we got some idiots that come right behind us and, and violate again. Um, so our goal is, as we got some events coming up, uh, just to clean up as much as we can to beautify our city and our communities. Uh, so do register for the Friday, April 26th, but also before then, we have one this Saturday, April the 13th. Um, we still, I think, we're partnering with Gaston City football players and their athletic uh, department. So come out with these young men and women um, and, and, and be a part of helping um, beautify this community as much as possible. <clears throat> uh, 
Gaston City School and Flying uh, Classroom presents STEM Fest, a free event located East Gaston Community Center, uh, 921 Wilson Avenue, Gaston, Alabama, April the 27th, from 11 a.m. to uh, uh, 2 30 p.m. Register now. Uh, there's a barcode on this uh, information, but it seems like that you can also go to the Gaston City School Board of Education website. And also, it seems like it's a solar program, a flying classroom, and other uh, um, things that is included into this STEM. There's an English version and a Spanish version on the back, um, which is very helpful. Uh, so thank you to the Gaston City School System and whoever's putting that, who is all is assisting with putting that STEM program on. <clears throat> As it relates to Carver Park, um, <clears throat> As it relates to Carver Park, uh, I'll speak first to the people that are disrespecting our community. Uh, there are picnic tables. There's a community meeting that I have here that is set for Friday, April the 12th at 6 p.m. also um, at 401 Locust Street uh, for those that are able to make it. The next thing is, is that again, though there are picnic tables with burn marks on it where literally people have literally, I guess, instead of using a barbecue grill, have grilled on the picnic tables. Um, the tennis uh, court has been disrespected. The fence um, torn and ripped. Um, so I'm going to say this to the violators, one, because that park do have a time that you can be out there, uh, just like every park I think in the city does. Um, we've worked hard uh, during my community organiza uh, organizing days to get uh, light, extra lighting back there for a team of a youth football team to go and practice on that, uh, that field. That was a beautiful place back there. Uh, and, and, and we must keep it safe and beautiful. Why? Because this district has uh, uh, compared to any other district has, I think, four housing authority community uh, 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 placements there. Um, it is in the center of these housing, and and we want our children to be able to walk safe on our streets uh, to these parks to play, and and to have a good time in their in in within the close proximity of their environment. To the violators again. Something's got to give and something's got to happen. Um, and so be beware of whatever is coming, whatever is coming forth as it relates to that, because uh, our children deserve uh, a safe and, and uh, adequate uh, place to play that is in their community. OK, that's that's one. The second thing is, well, is that I also um, give charge to uh, working with the mayor office and those that uh, those particular persons in charge to help and aid with this matter, because we have camp coming up. Summer is approaching us and our community is lacking with resources as it relates to close proximity with, again, as many housing authority uh, 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 facilities that we have in that community, meaning low income me, uh, as relates to black, white, as well as Hispanics, because our community has grown with diversity, which is a great thing. Uh, but we, do, we must uh, make a strategic effort, an intentional effort, to be able to approach the matters of income, economic development, and, and so on as it relates to the makeup of our community. I yield the remaining of my time. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Wilson. I don't have anything, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Councilwoman Minot. Councilwoman Minot. Um, I just want to remind everyone that Monday is April 15th, and we have an opportunity for um, our retired and senior volunteer program of Etowah County is providing tax service, and it is um, free. It is the Etowah County Courthouse, room 221, and it is available 11 to 3, starting yesterday um, and then the Family Success Center um, will have Saturday from 9 until 1 so those are the two locations where you can have your um, tax burdens um, known so <laughs> thank you thank you councilwoman councilman Robinson thank you mr. president just a quick reminder this I believe is the 15th annual smoke on the falls is happening this weekend at Nakalua Falls and since we are uh, 
having the campground redone, it, it's going to be out in the front parking lot right there at the entryway of Knockville Falls. So I'm just going to ask everybody to be careful, kind of slow it down. Uh, the RVs and the travel trailers will be coming in around Thursday, and they'll be in and out right there. So uh, everybody just slow down and have a good time, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. I want to thank everybody for having a good day today. Mayor, thank you. Uh, some good uh, proclamations today for the group's uh, child awareness and uh, those are out. We have so many good groups that are working to help our, our children in our city and county that are uh, unfortunate how things happen for them, but we have folks that are reaching out to help. It's, it's, it's a great, great program. Thanks for recognizing them. And uh, Mr. Tarver, thank you for being here this morning. And Mr. Goins, thank you. It's good to hear uh, great things about our airport. Uh, it, I, I think maybe diamond in the rough might be a overall <coughs> statement for Gadsden City, uh, for, the, for the city of Gadsden's airport. Mayor, I, I know you're working hard out there to, uh, to help to make it grow. And sounds like there's some really good, good things happening. I love Mr. Tarver will put pictures on LinkedIn about planes so i'm learning about uh, jets and planes that's that, that's nothing it's not anything that i really know about so it's, it's it's exciting to see the large ones come and to land and to utilize our services there at the airport so last reminder y'all be weather aware there could be some uh, uh good bit of rain that could mean some flooding so just be careful and watch where you are you, you know if you live in a low-lying area then you're prone to have that so just everybody be careful and safe out there see you next week <laughs>